Welcome to Just Us, the podcast where we explore the magic of nerdy living. I'm D&D Wife, your artistic guide to all things geeky and wonderful. And I'm DM Eguile, your seasoned storyteller and passionate gamer. Together we're here to share our adventures and insights into living a fulfilling nerdy life. Each week we dive into topics like navigating relationships in a nerdy world, maximizing your RPG experiences in small spaces, and growing your own herbs and veggies on a tiny patio. We'll also share our favorite hobbies, budget-friendly tips for having epic fun, and stories from our homebrew world of Extraeus. Whether you're a fellow nerd, a tabletop enthusiast, or just looking for inspiration to pursue your passions, we've got something for you. So grab your dice, your favorite snacks, and join us for a journey into the heart of nerdy living. Tune in to Just Us, where love, creativity, and adventure are always on the agenda. Welcome to Just Us, the podcast where we explore the magic of nerdy living. I'm D&D White. And I'm DM Eguile, and tonight we have a special episode for everyone out there with two extra special guests. Absolutely. Joining us tonight are Entlink and our digital artist and player of Bogbean, the Goblin Barbarian. And Thomas, the creative mind behind Captain V and our lizard folk pirate rogue. Ooh, yeah. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, tonight's topic is all about relationships, both both on and off the table. We'll discuss how our romantic partnerships influence our gameplay and vice versa. Which is why we figured we'd have you guys with us being the other couples at the table. So we figured that would be the best way that we could share personal stories, mm -hmm. insights, and tips of, uh, you know, kind of making the most out of playing D&D &D with your significant partner. Yeah, you know, so it's finding a good balance between each other. Uh, Eguile and I have been playing D&D &D together for quite a few years at this point, And being married has definitely added a unique layer to our gaming sessions yeah I, I mean i think like in the early in the early parts of our like relationship especially like our marriage when we're like i think like you know the honeymoon stage yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> uh we mostly were just like online gamers mm -hmm. playing mmos and that was kind of like our method of kind of getting out there and having a community yeah. uh, but it wasn't quite i think enough mm -mm. which is why you know we had always discussed and i think we talked about another podcast yeah. where it was a christmas gift mm -hmm. originally for you to be the dungeon master yeah well um, i had been interested I saw Critical Role and I was like, that looks really fun. I'd like to play. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it, but after you kind of got into what exactly was necessary for that, it kind of was like, nah, not, not you weren't kind of trying to do that. It was a little too intimidating, <laughs> just the rules and everything and having to keep track of all that. It was just a little too much for me to start. <laughs> yeah. And so we've, you know, we've been... <sighs> Oh, like six, six something years now that mm -hmm. we've been playing together and we've seen that it, it does play interesting dynamics oh, yeah. with your relationship, which mm -hmm. is why we wanted you two guys here because you guys are the early players with yeah. your one year, your after your honeymoon stage mm -hmm. of the relationship. So it is kind of interesting to see kind of how that plays off and, and, and kind of how those different experiences kind of play out. Yep, yep. I mean, is there one thing that you guys, I mean, you guys have now a year. So, I mean, how much have you guys think has changed since day one to like, our last session a couple yeah. weeks ago well now it's it's definitely become maybe my favorite uh common interest with him just mm. because like at first we didn't have a whole lot to talk about but now that our characters are more entangled mm -hmm. um there's uh there's just way more to kind of like be excited about i guess you know yeah. every time we come to a session gotcha yeah lots to talk about after every session now and you know we just have fun go just have, discussing what each other's perspective would be on it or any such a part. Gotcha. That's really interesting to see. You know, we're also going to be talking about how relationships might differ depending on where you are in life. You know, being a teenager playing with your partner is quite different from being married adults playing together. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, in my younger, younger college life, mm -hmm. you know, it was always like the like, who has a house? Who has an apartment? Yeah, where like, can we go? Who, where can we go? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to date myself, but I used to go to like John's Incredibles Pizza oh. with like to play Risk, yeah. but Lord <laughs> of the Rings edition Risk. Gotcha. Because then you could like go in, mm -hmm. pay your price and stay there for 12 hours Ooh. and they wouldn't kick you out. Yeah. Because that was the struggle when you're younger is like getting that location, mm -hmm. getting that space. And so you're you're much more of like, I think, you know. Oh, we can play for two hours? Oh, I'll yeah, be there right? for two hours. It's hard. But as adults, it starts to shift a lot where you're like, too, you know, it's like work. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't get out of bed for more than six hours. Right. Like, I, you got to make it worth my time. Yeah. And so I think it's interesting, and we'll look into more of that, like how that, dyna that dynamic can really affect not only your partner, but also like the rest of the people at your table. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's really interesting when you're younger, you don't really have a, a space at home besides your bedroom. So you really do have to find a hangout spot to go to. Right. But as an adult, you have your own space, so you don't have to feel the need to go 
go out. And I mean, we, we've obviously talked a lot about how you and I got started oh, and we, yeah. we, we've shared copious stories. So, I mean, as the other relationship yeah. at the table, how, <laughs> how would you guys say about sharing a little bit of the relationship dynamic mm-hmm. between you two? Well, it all started not just <laughs> getting into that DM <laughs> mode. Yeah. Um, well, we had been we've been playing for like almost coming up on two years now. Oh, Holy cow! Yeah. It has been almost two years. Uh, about like two birthdays since mm-hmm. we started. Yeah. Um, it's a good like, way to measure it. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good, good way. way to measure it. Mm-hmm. You know, a little self centered. <laughs> uh, we were friends before we started dating, but now it's been like eight years. Yeah, like eight yeah. Years. nine years this year. I want to say. Wow, that's um, lovely. But the transition into playing strangers, you know, different characters in D&D was really interesting to navigate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most of all, like, it was something to have in common together and kind of have an activity. Like, we're big TV watchers and media mm-hmm. enjoyers, but I don't know. There's something different about D&D. I'd always watched Critical mm-hmm. Role, as you were saying, too. Mm-hmm. But uh, this made me, like, get it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I spent a lot, I have invested a lot more into this, for sure. And uh, playing with my partner at the table, I feel like inherently I'm putting more energy into him as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that overall, like, it helps us having that common activity together and just letting us have something every so often. You know, we don't always plan something out or yeah. don't have to worry about it. Every so often we have a session. We know that we plan that day for that. Mm. And, you know, we... I didn't watch a lot of Critical Role outside of it, but we've started doing a lot more of that at home now. Yeah, Definitely. We're very into Dimension 20, and we're just, like, very avid uh, consumers of D&D content now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think before we... I think we were, like you were saying, just getting past our honeymoon stage mm-hmm. and uh, settling into that daily life routine, and this kind of adds that spice that doesn't yeah. make it boring. Gotcha. You have something to like kind of look forward to mm-hmm. versus just your paycheck or whatever. Yeah, you got to change it up every now and then, add mm-hmm. a little bit of flavor where you can. Now, I mean, it's kind of a running joke amongst our group, as I like Thomas, you're the more gamer-oriented of the two yeah. of you, but with uh, you at Link, I mean, this was obviously kind of that transition between, obviously, Thomas being heavily gaming and then playing a t- tabletop rpg game True. yeah he definitely had some more experience even with tabletop games than i did mm. um and i was kind of scared to get started just because like uh i'm i was kind of a shyer person mm-hmm. uh especially then and i don't know and <laughs> <Sorry, I'm checking. laughs> yeah, no it's it's there's always so much to go on and it's it's like kind of funny with how much you see with like as you play with your partner and like you said two years goes by and you're like whoa wait what mm-hmm. but in actuality yeah. you we've all gone on like really crazy adventures in those two years it's why yeah. it doesn't feel like it's been two years Absolutely. but i mean thomas i mean obviously switching from you know real video games to <laughs> tabletop games probably yeah change. i mean that's a bit of a change but i mean mm-hmm. that was before i moved out here and i stopped doing that when i was a lot younger i played like tabletop games like warhammer and a couple of stuff nice and I mean, I'm I'm a bit more social than Emily can be at times, <laughs> um, but like in total, it does help. And everyone who is here is very inviting, very fun to be around, and it just makes all of us be more friends than anything else. So everything mm-hmm. just feels great. It, you don't regret walking in, or as she said, just walking for a paycheck. You have a lot of fun with it. Nice. I absolutely have to agree with that. I think that we were very lucky with the table we were brought into as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we've had like other one shots and things that we've uh, to add to our little experience. And it's just not the same. People (sighs) aren't uh, in it for the the same reasons. And I think that's important. Yeah, it's it's tough finding your like right table, you know, <laughs> that that could be fun. But it's really interesting. Are there any like fun inside jokes or anything that you guys have gotten out of this experience that like you can share now as a couple? Uh, I mean, there's a couple <laughs> of things like uh, what the 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 Lilo and Stitch lying thing you did for a minute. All the full of lies. Yeah. 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 Um, Blog being Drew, Captain V's outline, and filled it up to what did we start out at? Wasn't it like it was it was, it was, it was like, like eighty or ninety percent? Eighty percent lies, and so now it's kind of that was actually actually I think the first touchstone between yeah. their characters, b- despite their uh, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rocky the Anna, start. Rocky start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and if I remember, it went up to full lies at one yeah. point. Yeah. Like, not, uh, I think it was later that session. <laughs> 
It was a cut con- or something like that. That session or the next one, I lied again and mm-hmm. it went to a hundred percent. You even like scrolled yeah. it up. Yeah, makes yeah. makes makes for good makes for good stuff. <laughs> Captain V just got a little too comfortable with a uh, deception. <laughs> But as always, if we, we'd love to hear anybody's thoughts on, on mm-hmm. this topic and be sure to like, review, and share our podcast. Uh, you know, any feedback we yeah, get, absolutely. any kind of experience that you've had that brought you into the D&D mm-hmm. world, especially with your significant other, yeah. be sure to share it with us uh, because it's kind of interesting, the kind of stories. And I find that, like, no matter kind of how it starts, mm-hmm. all the stories kind of start becoming almost similar and kind of that shared experience yep, yep. that you get as you start campaign- campaigning and as you play more and you have the sessions. It really kind of creates that kind of kind of a real like cornerstone moment for Mm -hmm. you can have with your relationship with your partner. Absolutely. I think it really broadens the um, experiences that you can have, Mm -hmm. like not just in a fantasy world, but um, yeah, you're taking on a different persona and maybe you're being able to, you know, process stuff that you've never been able to really do in that format. Yeah. It it gives you a little bit of freedom with what you can do and say, right? Oh yeah. (laughs) Uh, But let's talk a little bit about how we all got into D and D. I know (laughs) Egal, you started because of me, right? (laughs) Yeah. You know, we've, we've talked about it a few times that it was, I I think we like randomly stumbled on critical role. Like just randomly. It was like, Oh, YouTube. uh, This is. Yeah. It was just that kind of that, you know, issue of trying to find something to watch, but then not being able to find anything of like decent content. Yeah. And I remember us watching it and then you asking, what are they doing? Like, yeah. what is going on? Is this, this looks like, and I think it was just because you love just these people standing around making accents it and acting and having that kind of fun. And so <laughs> I got you the starter kit, mm-hmm. the Minds of Pendelver, yep, and yep. we kind of picked it up from there. Uh, you know, I had, I had experienced it in my younger years, mm. but I'd never actually played. I'd heard of friends, but even in like, my circle friends, I was like, oh, you're like, uh, you're ultimate nerd if you're like playing D&D yeah. and like you had access to resources because it was always viewed as not a very inexpensive hobby. Mm-hmm. As much as it's like, oh, pen and paper. Yeah, but your paper's made of gold and your pen's made of a diamond. Yeah, like, right. It's just, it's kind of can be, you know, expensive mm-hmm. as a young person to get into. Oh, yeah. Um, so it wasn't until I kind of had, you know, a partner who was like, hey, let's let's try this together so yeah. I could make that investment um, you Not know, have to worry about right. oh. I mean, and that was just you know how we got started. I mean, mm-hmm. what about you two? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I said before, like Thomas has had a lot more experience with like RPGs, like both online, like video games, and in person mm-hmm. in the past. So when you kind of we met at work, yeah, and yeah. And you kind of introduced me to the idea that like this is a such a creative thing. I feel like I keep pulling everyone in. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it was. I think that you pinpointed that I was like a shy person, but like mm-hmm. when you got to know me, like mm-hmm. I would get comfortable and start speaking. Yeah. And so I think that's a D and D really kind of helps bring that out even more. Mm-hmm. So. And I think it also came when it was more of also it's kind of that thing. And and this is what we always talk about the community is like I over you were talking about you trying to do a one uh, group thing with D and D. And then you telling me like the advice that the dungeon master who was trying, I'll, I'll give they them that trying they're trying. Right. Yeah. And it's a tough thing, but bad advice, especially maybe when you have it, new people. Maybe it works for extroverts. You yeah. know? Right. Everyone yeah. Has their thing. That's right. And so it was more of like, okay, well, obviously this person has a, you know, wants to try. Mm-hmm. So why not, you know, give it a little bit of a, more of a nudge. But right? I, our biggest thing too was obviously, hey, there could be another potentially couple at mm-hmm. the table, which was another layer of complexity yeah. you had to deal with. <laughs> and how, how did you get Thomas in on this? Well, because at first we were like, okay, maybe we'll just let him dip his feet. Yeah. Like, just um, visit. Yeah. So he could maybe be like a recurring character or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was really cool seeing that like you wrote it in such a way that it kind of allowed for the outside world to play yeah. out. Yeah. He can come in and out of the story and not feel like, oh, I'm not here. Yeah. yeah he was supposed to be, I think it was just like, oh, well, he has a boat, he has a mm-hmm. ship. So it's like, oh, whenever you guys are on the ocean, that's him. He's the captain. Totally. Yeah. But I kept encouraging him to come and what would you say? How He fast got he hooked. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, you know. a, lo- oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank just you. A little, just a little bit. Oh. For a while, we started seeing Discord Thomas come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took a while. That's true. That is true. <laughs> like my other friends not showing up on Discord too. Oh, I think it, I think it took you a while to get out of that shell, but then yeah. I think it was like the third or fourth session in, and we got a general like a a genuine laugh out of you, mm-hmm. and everyone at the table knew it. And it was like I'm, and I think her and I looked at each other, D and D wife and I, yeah. and just was like, yeah, he's Yay. hooked. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> it was like yes, 
we got them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, being married to a DM has its own unique set of challenges. Sometimes it feels like I'm a little bit married to the game, too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you guys have the glory of just being players. Mm-hmm. And I know that doesn't create another like level like we currently have with D&D Wife and myself. Yeah. And that, yeah, it is that kind of extra level that has to kind of be acknowledged and, mm-hmm. and kind of taken as an example. Because otherwise... Uh, you know, you're, you have to make sure you're balancing like, yeah, we both love D&D, but we also kind of both love each other yeah. and <laughs> like to have time together. And separate from when <laughs> your partner is the DM, that's so much work that goes into it that I don't want to necessarily spend so much time. Yeah. And then it's, oh, well, I'll see you at the table. Mm-hmm. That's when I'll get to see yeah, you as your Yeah, that's when character. we'll hang out. <laughs> Man, that's cold. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, but sometimes it's you know if it's a big event and mm-hmm. I'm spending the weekend getting it prepped. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, there's sometimes where, especially if she's involved, mm-hmm. it's like I'll kick her out of the office because I'm oh, like yeah. I'm printing stuff you can't see. You can't, you be, can't in be, here. be in here. Don't come yeah. in here. There's a level of secrecy that you guys have to kind of oh, yeah. friendly maintain. Friendly, And he also has to. He also has to find out you know when it's time to be like okay I gotta stop prepping because there is a lot of prep to do. Uh, but, you know, we also have to spend time with our significant well, others. Yeah, every now and then, you know, <laughs> it's kind of the thing we like to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd love to hear your stories, too, as well. So join our Couple of Nerds Discord. Share your experiences with us. If it's with a partner, that's great. Even yeah. if it's not, share what, what D&D does for you. It's, we'd love to hear it. Especially, like, married DMs and players. Mm-hmm. Definitely want to hear kind of how other people kind of handle those weird kind of kooky situations oh, that yeah. occur. Absolutely. Let <laughs> us know what you think. We, again, we love hearing from you guys. It's super fun hearing other perspectives and seeing where other couples lie as well. (laughs) Uh, But playing with your partner can be different from playing solo or with friends. There's a deeper connection and understanding between, I think, the the couple that plays together. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, like, people, like, would have assumed probably, like, if they knew us, like, oh, Captain V, Bog being, like, they're going to be in a relationship. It's going to, mm-hmm. you know, oh, they're well, going to be inseparable. I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah you sit course. next to each other at the table. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, but, like, it's really not that way we treat each other as the characters would in game. And I mean, outside of game, of course, like I'll mm-hmm. be with her. I'll spend time with her and I wouldn't want any other way, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to allow that to like change the game. Cause it ruins it for so many like yeah. good people you're with that, you know, it's, it's just, says what it is you know plus i think with like our table is that you know there's a few people <clears throat> tobias uh that would definitely <laughs> seize every opportunity to make that be like against you and, oh, and use yeah, that for sure. so it's like you're kind of preemptive like okay they know that we're gonna probably do that let's not do that mm-hmm. yeah um, oh my god <laughs> absolutely you know and uh, it, it, while people would assume that you guys would get into a relationship, I think it's really funny that in this instance, uh, even though the game has brought you closer together as a couple, you're really kind of very separate people in the game as your characters. <laughs> yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I feel like... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's no a weird thing. It's a weird... Oh, it's no. like, I love how divided we are. Right. It is so I great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because we are very similar people like, mm. in real life, so I feel like uh, I like our little nested life that we have together, but yeah. now being able to play characters that started out adversarial mm. and then, you know, I hope that they become friends. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the journey, the journey yeah. makes it worthwhile. It's right? definitely yeah. going to be like that long, slow burn of a relationship <laughs> that I think right? will be pretty... I love a slow and burn. it probably, I don't think, will ever be a romantic relationship, right? I, I don't I don't think that's where I you're started, going. Yeah, I wasn't looking at hey, this campaign. Never right? say never. You never no, say never. True, true, true. But, but yeah. I, right, we, I mean, you know, relationships, obviously, it's so funny. You know, mm. you're in a relationship and then you're now trying to think of like, okay, well, what are my relationships in the game too? <laughs> yeah. And, and I always thought it was funny because obviously when the DM is the husband of one of the players, mm. I feel like that kind of at first created this like, this like little shield around you where yeah. everyone was very much like, okay, uh, don't touch off her. limits. <laughs> no, no role play. <laughs> nope. Nope. That guy over there will kill my character. Yep. Not going to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the point where I even, in our very first campaign, one of our other kind of heavily role-playing yeah. kind of characters mm-hmm. uh, was more kind of like now trying to flirt with your, you know, your campaign one character. And mm-hmm, I remember mm-hmm. him kind of coming to the side later and be like, hey, man, I just want to let you know it means nothing. It, it, I just, it's, ca-. and I'm laughing in the, the person because it's like, yeah, no, I, of course. Like, I, I, I can tell <laughs> if someone's like, you know, blatantly flirting with my <laughs> wife in front of me or giving them, you know, what I would say is, mm, okay, poetry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, Eric. Um, but it, it's one of those things where, you know, you do kind of watch out for that because yeah. the idea is like, okay, well, if you're playing with your partner, well, then a certain aspect of our role play or our story building, well, that's just off the table. Yeah. So when you don't bite into that, you kind of let your other table mates mm-hmm. know, hey, this isn't this isn't our shtick. Like, right. we're playing individual characters. If we were on two different tables, it'd be mm-hmm. the same two different characters. Absolutely. That's definitely something that, as new players, I definitely looked into, like, what the community had to say about, like, nightmare players. And a lot mm. of that kind of dynamic came up where I, either as player and player or DM and player, yeah. certain personal relationships would get into play or into the way of gameplay. Mm-hmm. And I think that we had talked about we don't want that to undercut each other's characters or yeah. experience. Um, I definitely feel like setting those boundaries is important. Yeah. I don't want to like cheapen his character, his gameplay by favoring him right. in some sort of way. Or feeding into the, the sort of like assumption that you'll be together just because you're in a totally, relationship yeah. in the real world. Yeah, you know, it, I think it is really important to set up the boundaries and ensure that everyone feels comfortable. I think that's why it's important that we had our session zero, that way everyone can come, lay out their expectations and kind of where their boundaries are. And that way we don't have to worry about crossing them later on once we've established. Yeah, because I think that is like tough. And, mm-hmm. and obviously between the DM and being a player yeah. dynamic is obviously a lot different, but mm-hmm. I think it really is just like, I, I think it really sets the stage of like, Hey, when I'm here, it's, it's, I'm my character. I'm this yeah. person. I'm in this world. Mm-hmm. And I think when you, when you have that working and everyone's just thinking of the character, that's what really gets that seamless table Yeah, really. because it isn't this like, Oh, I'm constantly seeing this like flashback of the person, the character, the person, the character, and I can't really get in there. Mm-hmm. But once you kind of break that boundary and like, no, no, it's fine. We're here to role play. Once yeah. the game's over, you all go home and yeah. I, stay here right (laughs) you know so it really kind of makes it fun once you can kind of get rid of those kind of first Mm -hmm. awkwardnesses that take kind of place absolutely you know playing D &D together has definitely brought us closer i I think we we've shared some pretty unique adventures together and created some amazing memories right i can't even tell that like seven years has gone by Uh, i I mean i know it has years yeah it's seven years i mean i know seven years have gone by (laughs) but doesn't feel like it, right? Not, not, not really. Time yeah. Flies when you're having fun, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's nice to just have a special time mm-hmm. that you know everyone at the table. You know, it's a whole kind of communal effort to uh, set this time aside and have fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's a good way to like unwind, and then you we get to connect after like just a long week. Yeah. And it's the experience, the stories that come out of it. They're just stuff mm-hmm. that you can't replace. You know. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I mean, almost all of us work pretty stressful real life jobs. And so it's kind of nice that like on a semi-regular basis, Mm -hmm. we get to come together, get rid of all those kind of, you know, worries and stresses and just kind of enjoy our little homebrew world where we can really do whatever we want. Put ourselves through another set of different kinds of stresses. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But we hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Remember, playing D&D with your partner can be an incredibly rewarding experience. Oh, yeah. And make sure, share your thoughts, your stories. If you have a good story of where Mm -hmm. some sort of weird, awkward relationship (laughs) dynamic happens at your table, uh, please share it. We love, I mean, as we all love we love drinking every bit of tea we can get about D D <laughs> and its drama Absolutely. Uh, so make sure also to check out our youtube channel mm-hmm. a couple of nerds production it's where a lot of our background videos a lot of the times where you can see all the videos of the mm-hmm. minis of us kind of the different stuff and kind of get a little bit more about our community and kind of see us behind the scenes yep yep you can always check those out we love also hearing from you guys on the discord become part of our community uh not only does that help us as well know what is better to give you guys in terms of content but it also gives you a little bit bit of a hand also in creating the content bringing you closer into the community with us as well so that, that's exactly what we want and then obviously also thank you to at link and mm-hmm. thomas for coming in and Woo. kind of giving you, giving the relationship kind of yeah. side of another context yes, yes, yes. thank you again yeah, hopefully thanks. we'll be doing this for another seven years <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> right uh but thank you all for listening and obviously until next time keep embracing your inner nerd and living your best geeky life mm-hmm. thank you for tuning into this special episode of just us we hope you enjoyed it Thank you and have a great one. Bye. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Just Us. We hope you enjoyed diving into our nerdy world and picked up some tips for your own adventures. We'd love to hear about your own nerdy hobbies and see your unique living spaces. 
connect with us on a couple of nerds discord share your stories photos and join the conversation with fellow nerds and don't forget to check out our couple of nerds youtube channel we post videos showcasing the hobbies crafts and small living space innovations we cover in each episode whether it's painting miniatures growing a garden on your balcony or setting up the perfect rpg space in your apartment we've got plenty of inspiration and tips to share subscribe like and comment on our videos and stay connected with us through all our adventures until next time keep embracing your inner nerd and living your best geeky life thanks for listening to just us where we come together in nerdy harmony